Hello guys, this is Boy to Wonder, and I have a Metro PCS special edition news of the Metro PCS and T-Mobile merger. So what happened? Well, Metro PCS needed more spectrum and saw that T-Mobile's offer was an escape to get that spectrum, as well as for T-Mobile. T-Mobile currently does not have 4G LTE, and Metro PCS does, so combining the two would allow Metro PCS subscribers to have a wider selection of mobile phones and have service where Metro PCS currently does not have Spectrum at. It also helps T-Mobile as well with, its, with Metro PCS's 4G LTE network. To be technical, Deutsche Telekom, the owner of T-Mobile, will give $1.5 billion to Metro PCS investors. And if the company combines with Metro PCS, it will own 74% and Metro PCS will own 26% of the new company. Metro PCS sees that it is expensive to create more towers in more areas. Metro PCS wants and needs more spectrum if they want to create a larger subscriber base. But to do that, their capital had to meet those standards and Metro PCS just did not have that much resources as AT&T and Verizon and T-Mobile and Sprint do. So to get that, the company uh, had to be acquired by uh, another network such as Sprint, T-Mobile or AT&T or Verizon or they needed to buy another company like Leap Wireless aka Cricket Wireless. What about Metro PCS users? Well, Metro PCS customers such as I will have to wait and see. T-Mobile is planning to shut down Metro PCS and CDMA network in 2015, and most of the phones at Metro PCS use CDMA. T-Mobile wants to build its LTE towers with Metro PCS's existing LTE networks upon T-Mobile's HSPA Plus network. If the two companies merge together, the company will be called T-Mobile running on a GSM network and offering an HSPA Plus LTE network over an AWS Spectrum, which is Advanced Wireless Service. So for Metro PCS users who do not upgrade very often, this will be a forced upgrade where your phone that you carry now will not work with the anticipated network that T-Mobile has planned for the future company. Is this a good thing? Let's compare the coverage maps and see the benefits of this merger. On the left side, you can see where Metro PCS has its coverage map. Most of the time, most of the uh, spectrum is on the east side of the, of the United States and is also in the central part of the United States. You can also see it's on the west coast in California, Washington, um, most of Metro PCS's um, spectrum is in uh, uh, metropolitan areas and uh, bigger towns and bigger cities. As in with T-Mobile on the right side, you can see that T-Mobile is everywhere in the United States. It's scattered all over the place. It's even in other um, countries such as Canada and Mexico. And it's even in Alaska. Metro PCS not, is not really in Alaska. But as you can see, T-Mobile is. So let's go on to the next slide. To be just a little bit personal to continue with that, I do have family that is in the Netherlands. This will be a benefit to me because my family in the Netherlands who do speak Dutch actually use T-Mobile. So if Metro PCS does convert on a GSM network that uses T-Mobile, I'll be able to contact with my family with uh, maybe my bit extra cost because I'm in a different country, but it'll be um, um, freely and um, connected very well. Uh, the big question is, what about the prepaid goodness that Metro PCS has accomplished? Will it despair? Well, I am not sure because the deal has just struck, but based on the comments of the executives such as CEO Reen Oberman of Deutsche Telekom, um, I can see that they may keep the Metro promise as we have, have all considered to be the best as a Metro PCS customer and a fan. In the future, Metro PCS's customers and T-Mobiles will have a variety of plans to choose from. Are there any negatives on board? As a Metro PCS customer and fan, I see that this is a benefit in many ways. But one thing that gets to me and it grabs me the most is apparently Metro PCS bought T-Mobile USA, but T-Mobile will have its branding on future phones if the deal goes through. Also, I cannot wait to hear any changes to the Metro PCS service. That is my gripe. I want to know now. And on top of that, now that T-Mobile may have control over Metro PCS, they will have control and regulate the plans that Metro PCS may want to do in the future. As we all know, Metro PCS was the first to have 4G LTE. They were the first to have VO LTE, which is Voice Over LTE Network. Then they also are bringing out, which is RCS, Rich Communication Service. I will leave a link below of that video. 
and you can see all the information about that. But you can, as you can see, Metro PCS is an innovative company. You, if you understand what I'm saying here, this is why this is this is two negatives that I'm seeing right now. So thank you guys for watching. You guys are awesome. All we can do is hope for the best of Metro PCS and see how this outcomes. Thanks for watching this special edition news. Follow me on Twitter at Boy21 to see news and updates about Metro PCS such as these. And like me on Facebook of Metro PCS News and Rumors by Boy to Wonder. Uh, thank you guys for watching. You guys are awesome. There's one thing I want to say. That was a user named Garika something. I don't know. But Garika, if you're looking, I did do my research. Please do not come on my page and tell me that Metro PCS was not the first to have 4G LTE. Please do not come and tell me that they're just merging. If you can see, even though Metro PCS did buy T-Mobile, T-Mobile still has 74% of the so-called new company. We don't know if Metro PCS is going to go and continue with the deal in 2013, but it looks as if team, uh, Metro PCS will go along with it. So before you come on my page and tell me that I don't know anything and I did do my research, I think you might have to go ahead and reconsider your comment. Thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate, appreciate the, the constructive criticism. You guys are awesome. And like I always say, y'all be nice to each other and peace. This has been Boy to Wonder. Thank you for watching.